Okay, everybody. Um, my name is Wei. I am an application scientist uh, working for BioRed Laboratories in the uh, Digital Biology Center. So I'm going to give you a quick general introduction to Joplin Digital PCR workflow and the applications. So before I start the technical talk of this uh, digital PCR, I want to share with you a short side story about PCR. So PCR has almost 30 years of history at the same age around. Um, I am the same age, I would say. So when I was still young, teenagers, my first experience of hearing the PCR is from a senior student in my college. Uh, at, at, at that time, uh, thermocyclers was not a very common instrument in a uh, biology lab. So we had three uh, water baths. So the first experiment that senior students did was um, using three thermocyclers and then a PCR. Somehow it didn't work. Mm. So this bad experience uh, really made me think PCR is one of the most uh, difficult experiment in biology field, and designing primers may be very, <coughs> very tricky. However, after this 10, 15 years, everybody can do PCR. Qualitative, relative uh, quantitation, real-time PCR, almost all the medical and biological labs have PCR instrument and everybody is doing PCR in their uh, everyday experiments. So up to now, PCR still is not perfect. We always hear about, uh, hear a lot of complaints about real-time PCR. We're always hearing why the threshold cycle today is different from yesterday, why my data is uh, different after why my cDNA is not giving the same data as I did before. And sometimes assay design can be tricky because you want definitely good efficiency of your PCR in order to get consistent data. So there is an intrinsic need for a better PCR with better precision and reproducibility. There is an answer that is droplet digital PCR. So Joplin Digital PCR, which we call DDPCR in uh, the next uh, a few hours, uh, is uh, absolute quantitation. So in a digital PCR, instead of taking, your, uh, taking a bulk reaction, the reaction is partitioned into many, many thousands uh, of droplets here. In our case, it's the water in oil droplets. So in real-time PCR, you do the measurements during each PCR cycle. While this many thousands of uh, discrete uh, droplets is being measured at the endpoint PCR. So here, note that in digital PCR, we don't need a standard curve because the measurement is for absolute. And you can easily compare data from day to day, from labs to labs. And there is no replicates needed. So a few points about digital PCR here is uh, when you do a digital PCR, you prepare everything as you do in a qPCR, and you partition your um, reactions and uh, pass the thermocyclers, and then count the fluorescence, read positive reactions and negative reactions. So here, each droplet is an independent reaction. There is no material change between the, each reaction. The droplet is uniform in size and in the volume. This is very important for absolute quantification. Uh, digital PCR is endpoint assay. So you will not be able to test the fluorescence dur during your PCR. Every reaction is cycled until saturated. Only positive or negative is measured. So since it's endpoint assay, there is no need to get every PCR being perfect. The readout of digital PCR comparing to the conventional real-time PCR, which you measure the threshold cycle, uh, the readout of digital PCR is positive or negative. You count the numbers of droplets that we target, which we consider positive, or the number and the numbers of the droplet without target, which is negative. And based on the positive and negative value uh, numbers, we apply Poisson statistics and calculate the copies per microliter. So here is the, uh, the principles of how to uh, convert 
the positive negative ratio to the absolute quantification. So how many of you are familiar with Poisson distribution, Poisson statistics? OK. <laughs> so I, I think here I, I want to spend uh, one minute to uh, just simply uh, explain what Poisson statistics mean. So when uh, given a certain number of templates, let's say 5,000 of templates, uh, to distribute these 5,000 templates into 20,000 of droplets. The distribution pattern of uh, the templates in the droplets actually follow Poisson statistics, which means some of the droplets will get zero templates. Some of the droplets will get one, two, three, or even four, um, four uh, templates. So the droplets which get um, the templates will show a positive signal, while the ones without templates will show a negative signal after the PCR. Uh, no matter how many times you do this uh, distribution experiment, the pattern of the distribution, given a certain number of starting material and the distribution droplets number, it's always the same. It follows Poisson distribution. So our inst instrument is able to test the positive and negative ratio and calculate concentration based on Poisson statistics. And our dynamic range is from 1 to 100,000 copies per 20 microliter reaction. So for the data display, uh, in real-time PCR, you see the curves. But in um, digital PCR, it's even more simple. Uh, here, what I'm showing is a one-dimensional fluorescence plot after, um, after a Tachman-based assay. So you see this, uh, the, the y-axis is the amplitude of the fluorescence, while each dot in this figure represents one droplet. You can easily see the droplets are categorized into two kinds. Well, you see here is a histogram. You see the droplets was lower fluorescence, the droplets was higher fluorescence. And the purple line here is a thresholding line, which means things above considered positive, since uh, um, is below is considered negative. So here it's very obvious that uh, it's easy to determine droplets positive or negative. And based on the numbers, our machine is, go, uh, is able to call the concentration, which is 2,400 copies per microliter. So here in right figure, it's the same assay, but was different input of the starting molecules. Here it's given 6,600 copies per microliter. Notice the difference between here and here, as the numbers of negative and positive is changed, but not the fluorescence amplitude. So which means with the same assay, whenever you perform an experiment, you always expect to see your positive droplets is at the same location. So here is another plot showing two-dimensional fluorescence. Our instrument is able to read um, two fluorescence at the same time, which means you can easily duplex an assay and analyze two targets. So here in the y-axis is assay one in FAM channel. You're detecting one target in assay one. And in the x-axis is assay two in VIC channel. So when you duplex two assays in two different channels, you're, what you're going to see in a two-dimensional plot is four clusters when you have two kinds of targets inside. These two class, uh, four clusters represent four populations of droplets. Down here, you see the gray one, which means double negative. In these droplets, there are no templates. While well, this blue one, you have target one, only target one. Here, the green clusters in each of the droplets here, you only have target two. While well, you see this brown clusters here, uh, these are uh, what we call double positive droplets, which contains both target one and target two. So 2D dimensional fluorescence plot actually provide uh, a new uh, data analysis uh, platform that enables us to do a lot of things that previously impossible. So here is our BioRed QX100 system and the reagents. Droplet generator was the consumables to make the droplets, and a reader which is going to read all the droplets after your PCR thermocycling. 
you have the reagent that help you to emulsify your droplets, uh, your reactions. And also we provide assays for copy number variation, gram mutation detection, as well as uh, we also have kit that doing the um, uh, library quantification for NGS. The workflow of droplet digital PCR is very easy. As I said in all your slides, you just prepare your PCR as if you are preparing a real-time PCR by using our master mix, which contains essential components to emulsify uh, your reaction. You use our droplet generator, which can um, emulsify eight samples within two minutes. And then you transfer your droplets into a 96-well PCR plate, uh, put it into a thermocycler, Afterwards, you can use our readers to read the droplets, use our software to get the results. So up to today, we have over 300 units installed over, over worldwide. And we have more than 25 publications on all different kind of applications, including absolute quantification, real event detection, copy number variation, gene expression, and also NGS library pr preparation. And there are many, many more applications are uh, under development and, and it's uh, coming soon. So here is my favorite part, rare event detection, where digital PCR showed unparalleled precision and sensitivity. So when we mention about rare event detection, it's actually two kinds of uh, experiment uh, the first one is rare species detection. For example, you can do foreign species detection in a targeted species or doing contaminants detection in environmental samples. So in this category, the targets you are detecting, uh, the sequence is completely irrelevant of your, uh, tar uh, of your background, background DNA. While the other category, rare mutation detection, is much more difficult. Um, rare mutation detection refers to you want to detect this, um, a sequence which is highly similar to a background sequence. In some cases, it's, it's so similar, only single nucleotide differences between the two species. Uh, so for example, uh, the BRAF point mutations in a cancer tissue sample. The principle that how digital PCR is able to help detect a real event is um, because, the, because of the partition. So here, for example, if I have a mutant that is only 0.1% in my sample, this means in a bulk PCR, one copy of the mutant has to compete with 999 copies of wild type for amplification. This is very, very difficult in bulk PCR because always if your uh, mutant real species is in very low concentration, in real-time PCR, your CT value become, uh, after 35 cycles, it's not reliable. And sometimes it's very difficult for this real mutant to take off during the PCR. However, if we partition the reactions into um, the droplets, for most of the droplets, you will see it's negative. There is no mutant. Well, for those droplets that contains mutant, uh, the maximum number of wall type it has to compete is only twofold, which means one mutant compete with two wall type. Such an easy thing comparing to bulk PCR. So the relative abundance increased from 0.1% to 33%, and this increase significantly improved the system's ability to detect the real mutation. So here is one example that we are doing a titration series of a mutant under a, a background of const constant background of wild type. You can see go down to 0.01% without any problem. So um, for bulk PCR, real-time PCR, usually you can go to 10%, sometimes you can go to 1%, but 0.01% is impossible. So here are some publications that our customers use in digital droplet, <laughs> uh, droplet digital PCR system to do uh, real, uh, real events detection. 
One publication to uh, mention here is the recent paper using our system to detect HIV DNA in the baby, which proves a functional cure of HIV baby, which is impossible with any other kinds of technologies. Uh, another core application was digital PCR as the copy number variation detection, uh, which we call CMV. Uh, CMV uh, refers to uh, too few or too many copies of genes. Uh, this is always associated with disease, disease phenotype. So our system is able to uh, give you uh, improved reproducibility. So here in this figure, no matter how many repeats you are doing, you always get the, the constant a uh, very consistent uh, CMV number. And we provide precision. We get almost the integer numbers when you measure the copy number. And we also provide unparalleled resolution. So if you have a sample that contains four copies of uh, a gene, and the other samples contains five copies of that gene, we, our system is able to discriminate four copies from five copies where other technology is not able to. Here's one publication that's showing a uh, HER2 gene, which is um, uh, very famous in breast cancer samples and uh, the copy number increase in um, the cancer tissues. Uh, our digital PCR system is able to detect the HER2 expression and quantif quantify the uh, copy number variation very precisely. This has a very good clinical relevance. Also, our system is able to uh, do gene expression. You can test the mRNA expression. You can do single cell transcription detection and also microRNA detection. Here I'm giving you an example. The left one is uh, an experiment performed by digital PCR, while the right one is by qPCR. So as m I mentioned, when your target is in the low concentration, it's not reliable looking at the CT. While in digital PCR, you can get a very good linear linearity even you are going down to low concentration. S our system is also a great complement for um, NGS. We provided a library quantification kit for Illumina TrueSeq. The, uh, the unique part of our kit is not only the quantification, we also show the quality of your library. So here, our system is able to discriminate, um, to show you what is the size distribution of your library here. And also, you can look at if your library com composed of adapter, what is the percentage of uh, adapter dimer dimers in your library. So we know NGS is very expensive. When you see a library that has a, a high percentage of adapter dimers, you may not want to proceed to sequencing. Here is a figure showing that uh, with our quantification, uh, you can easily balance a 12 library uh, very well. So uh, as I said, digital PCR is a new platform. A new platform always give us a um, very um, um, gives us uh, more things than we thought about. So here's one application that uh, we cannot do before and we cannot think before. It's the linkage analysis. So imagine you have two genes uh, that you think they may or may not on the same piece of chromosome or the same piece of, uh, in vicinity. So if the two genes are unlinked, uh, I guess here uh, it's not showing very well. Uh, but I will just explain it. So when the genes are unlinked, when they, tr they are distributed partitioned into the droplets, you will get less possibility of the, these two genes in one droplet. While if the, the genes are linked, the blue one and the green one are linked, that there is a much higher possibility that you will get double positive droplets. That's what I'm showing here is this one was unlinked the genes, this one is, was somewhat linked the genes. So this is one of the applications that you can do with digital PCR system. 
Our system, even we only read two channels, there is always ways to multiplex. You can play with the primary probe concentration, and you can play with the fluorophore combinations in our system to do more than two assays at the same time. One more exciting uh, thing about our system is our new uh, one, which, called, which is called the QX200 system, is compatible with a DNA binding dye evergreen. So QS100 system is good. You can do Techman assays, probe assays, but you, you were not able to do the evergreen. But the new system is able to. The good thing about the new system is not only it's uh, lower the cost, but also in the evergreen binding dye, uh, you can get uh, discrimination of amplicon size. So here is one example that when you have splice variants, uh, in the evergreen system, you will see distinct the population with different amplitude of fluorescence. So this gives you a lot of more possibilities. And finally, as a summary, what our system gives you is absolute quantification, precision, reproducibility of your data, sensitivity, accuracy, and flexibility and compatibility. So you can do high throughput, or you can combine in walls to do high sensitivity test. And our system com compatible with a lot of n other technologies. And for more information, you can go to our website. And uh, during the break, uh, uh, I am happy to talk with, with you for, and answer any questions. Thank you. Yeah, uh, a thousand will be a little bit difficult considering when you have large size of amplicon and short size amplicon, there is a competition for the reagents, for the um, you know PCR resources. So a few hundred, we don't have any problem. You might be able to optimize the thermocycling protocols in order to get all the amplicons amplified um, similar to the same uh, similar extent. But you, you need to optimize a little bit if you are dealing with longer amplicon. Sorry, I actually, uh, actually we can go up to KB, uh, one of the uh, KB and larger and we can actually be able to do that. What about multiplexing? Multiplexing? Um, as I showed in early slides, um, I mentioned there are two ways to multiplex in our system. Uh, one is to um, play with the probe concentration so that you get different positive clusters. Because in our system, your fluorescence, is rel um, your fluorescence amplitude is depend on the probe concentration you input. So imagine you have two assays. You want to both detect it in channel two. You can have assay one uh, probe in one concentration, the other probe in double concentration, so you will see they are forming different clusters. And then you can do auto clustering to uh, measure the concentration. The other thing is a little bit more complicated, because you need to have a little bit more uh, knowledge about the different fluorophores that can be detected in these two channels. <laughs>